The tank advanced little after the Great War. Most were hoping they would never be needed in battle again. But a few realized their potential and continued to push their development. The Mark C Hornet was a medium tank design. Based on the Whippet, it did not make it into production till the end of the war. The infantry had plans to acquire their own tanks. There were two competing designs, the medium Mark D and the Vickers light tank. The Vickers, similar to the previous Marks, had many improvements. A revolving turret, suspension, and the engine in a separate compartment from the crew. Designated the A2E1, its advanced transmission was unreliable and the design was abandoned. Britain had been the developer and originator of the battle tank, but lost the edge after the war. They did continue to develop armored vehicle designs for cavalry and infantry support. In 1934, the A9 or cruiser tank was developed. Intended to foray deep behind enemy lines, its main advantage was speed. 125 were put into production with various manufacturers. It could attain speeds up to 40 kilometers per hour. Its chassis would go on to be the basis for the more heavily armored Valentine model. Developed for the army and introduced during the Second World War, the Crusader was a cruiser tank with five road wheels for better weight distribution. It was a fast tank, but suffered from the lack of heavy armament. Its two pounder gun was very limited in range and penetration. The French developed the Char B1 as their main battle tank. It had a crew of four and very effective armor. It had a range of 200 kilometers and a top road speed of 28 kilometers per hour. It served the French forces with some effect until overrun by German forces. In 1922, the Russians, looking for new tank technology, turned to the Germans for assistance. They traded secret facilities for German know-how. By 1927, at Kazan, a tank training school was opened. There, new tank designs and tactics were studied in great depth. American manufacturers took the British tank design and produced the Mark 8. Armed with two six-pounder cannons and 30-caliber machine gun, it had a crew of 11, a range of 50 miles at six and a half miles an hour. They also took the French Renault FTD set design and produced their own. The first all-American design tank was the Ford 3-ton M 1918, a two-man vehicle with a top speed of eight miles per hour. Fifteen were built and one sent to France for evaluations. The war ended before it could go into mass production. They explored other designs in 1922 and through that decade the T2 and T4 models. For various reasons, none went into production. The T28 was classed as a super heavy tank destroyer weighing in at 95 tons. Only two were built. In 1928, a maverick tank designer, J. Walter Christie, put forward a chassis design that would allow a nine ton tank to travel at speeds up to 30 miles per hour. His design was utilized in most of the succeeding tank models until 1944. It was the Second World War that quickly became the Tank War. Mechanized infantry, fast-moving artillery and aircraft all contributed to a fast, mobile and brutal war. The tank was in the forefront of strategic and tactical thinking on every battlefield. The German doctrine on the use of tanks was well developed. Their attention to armor protection and firepower was superior to most other tanks. However, it came at the expense of speed and reliability. Tank production suffered. For example, in 1943, the US built nearly 30,000 tanks, Britain built 7,476, 
But Germany, with the increase in materials and precision construction, could only output nearly 6,000. The Soviet Union constructed an estimated 20,000 per year. Developed during the 30s, the Panzer III was introduced to battle at the beginning of World War II, and they quickly realized it was under-armored. It was upgraded to 30mm hardened steel plate and gained a second 30mm plate front and rear. This made it impervious to British and Soviet anti-tank weaponry except at close range. The model's main armament was also upgraded as new opposition armor appeared throughout the war. The model was withdrawn from main service and redesignated to a support role, placing the Panzer IV as main battle medium tank. Designed originally as an infantry support tank, it took on the main anti-armor role as the Panzer III was pulled from that service. Over 8,800 were produced and exported to other countries. The British had continued developing their tank designs. The Matilda was one, nearly 3,000 were produced, the A11 model only armed with machine guns. The later model, A12, sported a quick-fire two-pounder tank gun. Introduced in 1937, it saw service through the war. The Valentine utilized design elements of the A10 tank suspension and transmission, but was lighter armored than the Matilda, but matched it for speed. Initially considered too small and cramped, it was eventually accepted after the British Expeditionary Force was evacuated from Dunkirk with the loss of all their equipment. It was a successful infantry support weapon in desert warfare. It was also utilized by the Red Army as a light tank. The Churchill was known for its effective armor and good off-road capability, and its chassis was the basis for many variant and specialist vehicles. It was, however, undergunned with a two-pounder cannon. Attempts to improve this with a three-inch howitzer did not fare too well. It was almost shelved, but an improved version, the Mark III, went into battle in North Africa and proved its capability to survive numerous direct hits from German guns. The Mark III also fielded a six-pounder gun on an improved turret design and is credited with knocking out a Tiger tank. The Mark VI version of the Churchill sported the even larger 75-millimeter gun and saw action from Normandy through to the end of the war. <laughs>